Hi everyone, George with The Art of Water and welcome back. Hey, today I wanted to touch on a couple of things regarding maintenance and uh, how I'm able to keep my particular nano aquariums in such pristine shape and uh, why the water looks so clear and the livestock so happy, the plants so uh, healthy, etc. Now most of my plants in my aquarium um, have started out in CO2, but I do not always keep them in CO2. I may do this uh, temporarily uh, when I'm first setting up a tank before I ever put any fish livestock in or invertebrates in uh, just to sort of get everything off to a good start, keep the algae uh, blooms at bay and uh, etc. So the number one thing uh, that I've stressed forever in my videos is uh, the use of uh, no chemicals if I can get away with it. Uh, but there are a few that I have to use because I just think that in the world that we live in, when we're striving for per perfection and we're trying to get the best, absolute, uh, perfect environment uh, for our fish, our plants, and everything in the tank, uh, sometimes there are a few products uh, which I have found uh, that I can trust and uh, actually are very beneficial in the long run. First thing I wanted to talk about was uh, number one, water changes. Now I've stressed this a lot. Uh, we've gone over this almost in every video. I, I mention it at least somewhere in the video. Uh, I believe that every tank needs a 50% water change. Um, at least once a week. When the tank is first set up, I would say you need to do a quarter water change daily, but you have to be careful. There are fish that are very sensitive to this many water changes and uh, maybe the hardness of the water, maybe the temperature of the water when it is going into the tank and they're newly uh, uh, placed in the tank, the fish, uh, and they may be uh, just very, very sensitive to any kind of temperature changes that uh, are difficult on them. Now, the number one fish that I have found this to be, and I had no idea until I started losing a couple of fish, um, and I pride myself on not losing any fish at all until recently but this is why this object has come up and i'm making this video today the number one fish that i've found that is very sensitive to water changes when they're first introduced to your tank are the cardinal chetra now the reason for this as i've read about this a little bit more is that a lot of people when they're doing a water change don't really pay attention to how close they are in temperature uh, of the water going into the tank after water has been removed and your tank has been cleaned. And uh, this can be the number one problem associated with the loss of cardinal fish. Once cardinal fish are shocked by uh, sudden drops in temperature or anything like that, um, they actually can go into a nosedive and never come out of it no matter how much you do to try to correct the problem. The first thing is not to have the problem in the first place. It's so simple to have an electronic uh, uh, thermometer that uh, you first take the temperature of your tank and then you take the temperature of the water going back into the tank. One of the other things that uh, I have found is a lot of people are failing to use dechlorinators. They think that the water changes alone are going to solve their problem. Well, to a certain extent, that's true. But if you are not putting dechlorinators in your water and you're putting massive amounts of, uh, of chlorine in there, uh, this burns the gills of your fish and uh, it does create problems, uh, especially for sensitive fish like the Cardinal Tetra, for um, the uh, Galaxy Raspora, 
Uh, I'm trying to name a few fish that I've noticed this with over the last year or so that I can point directly to and say, yeah, um, I, I know that that's exactly where I failed to do something. Not on purpose, because I do have um, a pretty regimented um, way of cleaning fish tanks and uh, changing the water uh, so that I don't miss things like that. Now, sometimes you'll have to walk away in the middle of cleaning a tank, and uh, I always put a little checklist in front of me. I move from tank to tank, and I have a little piece of paper that basically has a checklist in it that just moves with me on to the next tank as I'm uh, doing a water change. That way I can go back and make sure that I have not missed anything. If you can, the best way to dechlorinize your water, dechlorinate your water, I can't talk today, uh, is to have a five gallon bucket. For a nano tank, you can change, you know, five, six, seven nano tanks with a five gallon bucket and uh, that is the best way I have found is to leave out, uh, and I always have going a, a couple of five gallon buckets of water that uh, are being allowed to uh, set for a couple of days before they get used. I'm adding dechlorinators to them, and I'm also adding a little bit of a product by Seachem called Stability. Now, the dechlorinator that I use is also by Seachem, and it is called uh, Prime. So, uh, when I am doing a water change, uh, both of those are already in that five gallon bucket, and I add just a little hint more, just to make sure that there's no way that we are missing anything on changing uh, the water that is going to affect these fish. Now, I know I'm focusing on one particular fish tank here. This is my cardinal tank. This is the one where I learned my hardest lessons. And I wanted to make sure that you see that the fish in here now are extremely healthy. We've had no losses. Um, because this is only a 6.8, uh, it's either 6.8 or 7.6 gallon aquarium. I don't have a large school in here. Now, what I would say to you is you need a minimum of six fish in one particular species for a school to start. Now, I had uh, 12 in this tank because I thought that would be max uh, with the autocyclids that I have in here. And uh, I found out that when I was losing fish, it was not because I was over um, powering the tank with organic matter and uh, waste, but I was just simply uh, doing the wrong things when I was doing the daily water changes. Now, now that this tank is in a healthy mode and I have uh, decided uh, to move to just 50% water change once a week, I am very careful to make sure that the temperature of the water that I'm taking out, I take the temperature of the tank, and then what I'm putting back in, I make sure that I adjust that temperature to no more than a half a degree to a degree um, less or more than what is currently in the tank. Now, I suggest if you're going to have a temperature fluctuation of any kind and you can't get it perfect, it is always better to have the temperature slightly higher than it is to have it slightly lower. Slightly lower shocks the fish, pure and simple. Now we're gonna move on to some other tanks in my office here. This is just one of the rooms where I have tanks. These are all nano tanks. This is my uh, sparkling grommy tank. This tank recently went through an overhaul, not because I was having issues of any kind, but because I was sort of getting bored with the uh, scape that was in there. And uh, right now I have just three sparkling grommies in here and a couple of auto synclids. Uh, no shrimp. Uh, I find that the sparkling grommies are a little aggressive with the shrimp and uh, just, uh, just hasn't been something that I have found works very well. Uh, 
with those particular kind of um, fish and shrimp mixture. Uh, so I avoid those at this point. Uh, I have been thinking about putting some larger mono shrimp in here uh, just to kind of keep the, the tank a little bit more pristine. Right now I'm not having any issues. Uh, the tank is pristine and again uh, the most important thing, water changes and specifically paying attention to dechlorinization and temperature and making sure that uh, you're doing about a 50% water change a week on a well-established tank like this. Um, this particular tank over here is my chili raspora tank. I have had the same amount of chili rasporas in here from day one. There's 10 of these guys in here. It's a mixture of males and females. And I do have a rather large, which you can't see right now because I just did a water change in, but uh, I do have a rather large um, population of cherry and blue velvet um, shrimp in here. Now, uh, I do notice that when I do water changes, the shrimp do disappear for maybe an hour or two before they start to come back out and feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, the tank. If you look down here though, you can see that they are starting to come back out. And uh, this tank has just been a beautiful tank. I never have any algae issues at all in this tank. And I attribute that to good lighting, good circulation, 50% uh, water changes at least once a week. And I absolutely, again, uh, attribute this to uh, the fish that I have in here. There are also a couple of uh, zebra, um, what am I trying to say? Zebra snails in here that uh, I have found uh, do a really, really good job of just kind of keeping certain areas of the tank clean that you may not uh, be able to get to and they will do that job for you. You can see on the back wall there. There's a, uh, a Blue velvet shrimp otherwise known as a blueberry shrimp. There's all kinds of different names that go on with these and there There's another cherry so they are coming out either they uh, like the photo session that I'm giving them or they just happen to be coming out uh, as I was uh, doing this particular video the last tank that I wanted to talk about was a tank that's over here, and this one's right near my desk. And um, this has probably been the most established tank of all of my tanks in this particular part of my home. Uh, this is a cobalt, and it's about a 7.5 gallon cobalt. Of course, we all know that when you add in uh, your hardscape, your substrate, your plants, your rock, uh, all of that is going to reduce the amount of water that's actually in the tank. So uh, having said that, this is a species tank as well. This is Ember Tetras along with uh, some cherry uh, shrimp and some blueberry shrimp. I did have a black and white in here. Unfortunately, that little guy climbed up and got out of one of the little cracks or around the rim that isn't completely covered, something that I never thought anyone would be able to fit through, but he did and I found him unfortunately dead the next morning and that was pretty sad because I had two of those and the first one I lost on the very first night that I put him in the tank. But again, I wanna stress the health of these tanks is really predicated on the amount of work that you're willing to put in. It does not take a long time. You can get a little siphon hose and uh, a pail and uh, you can siphon part of the water out, go in with a toothbrush, just clean the edges and any parts of the glass that look like they're having any kind of algae issues whatsoever. Um, today, I literally cleaned five tanks, uh, including the ones that are in this office and one uh, down the hall in my wife's office uh, within, I would say, 45 minutes. It was not hard work and uh, it was absolutely so easy to do. Again, I had a five gallon uh, uh, 
bucket of water that had been sitting for about four days and uh, I always have that going on. I rotate water constantly to make sure that I have good, clean, and dechlorinated water. So let's go back over some of the basics here and talk about the things that I find most important. Number one, water temperature. Most of the fish that I have in my office here, their range is between 78 and 81 degrees. They seem to thrive in that. And uh, without exception, I would say most fish are going to do well in that environment. There are some that uh, will not do well with water heated up to that um, amount. But uh, generally uh, speaking, you're not gonna have any issues with that. Your fish being a little bit warmer is way better than your fish being a little bit colder. So the importance of that is uh, something that I just can't stress enough, that water temperature, when you're doing a water change, try and have it as close to the water temperature that's already in your tank as you possibly can. Make sure that that water is absolutely dechlorinated. That means leaving it set for 24 to 48 hours and also adding in some prime by Seachem and also some stability because whenever you're doing a water change, my recommendation is to put a little bit of stability from Seachem in there as well, which uh, keeps the tank from going into shock of any kind and uh, knocks down any possibility that you're gonna have a spike in uh, organics and whatever because you are stirring up a lot of a lot of stuff in the tank when you're cleaning the tank if you're not uh, stirring up some things then you're probably not cleaning your tank well enough the second thing that I find really really important in keeping your water clean is filtration now most fish do not like really harsh um, flows of water so it's important that uh, when we uh, do uh, put these aquariums together, these nano sized tanks, that we uh, can easily get water that can be overwhelming to the fish. So the best way to prevent that is a little trick that I have, any valve coming out of your pump, stuffing a small amount of very coarse um, sponge in there just I mean like a size of a dime or something like that that will reduce the flow of the water and uh, knock that flow down and uh, keep it uh, you know pumping through there on these nano tanks it does not require a lot of um, uh, filtration per hour going through these to keep them happy and healthy, but you do have to make sure that you're getting a pretty good amount of uh, exchange of water. And the only way you're gonna do that is to have your, your water properly uh, filtered through your pump. And uh, I should say your filtration system, not necessarily your pump, that was a bad choice of words. Anyways, as you can see, these uh, plants in here are all doing well. I don't have any of these on CO2 right now. Now, however, they all started out with a CO2 boost when I first started uh, putting uh, the uh, tanks together, and uh, they have thrived off uh, really just basically keeping the water in pristine shape uh, and not having problems with algae or anything like that because I'm doing those kinds of water changes. Now, we'll uh, talk about pH, we'll talk about nitrates, and we'll talk about ammonia and uh, how important it is to check these occasionally. Now, I'm not a big fan of checking them constantly and driving yourself nuts spending a fortune on, uh, on uh, chemical kits. Uh, but I will say this, I think it's very important that at least once every three to four weeks, 
that you check each tank to see where you're at uh, on your uh, your water quality and the best way to do that obviously is to uh, make sure that you, when you're doing a water change uh, uh, maybe your third water change of the month or your fourth water change of the month that you do check the, the balance of the chemicals in your tank and make sure that your pH, uh, your nitrites, your ammonia, your nitrates, all of these things are, which I feel are the most important things, are really held at bay so that you don't have spikes in any of these things, which can be very quickly something that can overwhelm your tank and create problems for you. Now, if you have any questions regarding anything of what I've talked about here today, uh, I didn't get into lighting that much because uh, basically uh, lighting is a very personal thing that has to be adjusted on an aquarium based on height and width and all of that stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's really a more important subject that, you know, takes a little bit longer than just a few minutes to explain and to experiment with. And I, I really believe that um, we should probably have a day where we talk about lighting in general and uh, how important it can be uh, to slow growing plants, to fast growing plants, to carpet plants, to crypts, to uh, species such as uh, uh, Anubius, uh, Nano, uh, those kind of plants that are slow growers and uh, really have a conversation about that. And we'll save that for another day uh, because it can be uh, as important a um, topic as anything regarding any of these fish tanks. So, having said that, I'm going to end this uh, video. And I want anyone who has any questions to please leave your comments at the bottom and I will get back to you. Anyone who wants to give us a thumbs up, we'd sure appreciate that. This channel's not growing as fast as I would have liked, but I'm not sure why. Um, but if you find it informational and you find it to be good information that helps you, I sure would uh, appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe from you. And uh, pass it along to your friends as well, too, so that they subscribe and, uh, you know, we get uh, a good base of people out there that are in the hobby that uh, really want good information and uh, want to know why, you know, we're all successful when we are uh, with how we're doing things to get us to that point. So going back over it one last time here, uh, we talked about the quality of water and how we achieve that. 50% water change at least once a week in your nano tanks. Uh, you can go a little bit longer in your larger tanks. I still do 50% uh, on anything up to 10 and even 20, uh, depending on the species of fish that are in the tank. But uh, water changes are so important. Number two, dechlorinization and water temperature going from the water going out to the water coming in, that you're paying attention to that. There are delicate species out there of fish, uh, which we don't think about as being delicate because everybody seems to have them. But there are more losses I have found uh, over a period of time with cardinal tetras than almost any other fish out there. I have tetras of every kind and you can, uh, you know, be a little bit negligent and uh, you know you will you will not have those kind of problems of fish dying on you very quickly but the cardinal tetra which when we go back over here uh, is so important that you really have some guidelines and some discipline on making sure that the water that you're 
replacing it with is very well dechlorinated, naturally if possible, and of course with a little bit of prime from Seachem and a little bit of stability by Seachem as well added to the water when you make the water change so that you're uh, really, really giving these fish uh, as little shock as you possibly can. And uh, again, I would rather see a little bit of water going in that is slightly higher in temperature by a degree, no more than that, uh, than I would see uh, uh, water going into the tank that's one degree lower. Uh, these, tank, these fish can be very sensitive, very, very sensitive to all of that, and we just want to make sure that uh, if we're focused on that, we're going to have a good, healthy school of these uh, particular fish, and uh, you won't learn the lessons the hard way like some of us have, including myself, because it's, like I said earlier in the video, it's the first time since I've been in the hobby that I really lost any uh, significant amount of fish, which three doesn't sound like a lot, but to me, when you don't lose fish at all, uh, when you're adding fish to your tanks and you lose three, it really does kind of shake and rattle you a little bit. But now um, that I figured out some of the, the reasons why and I've taken care of it, uh, everything seems to be working out really, really well. Anyways, again, if you have any questions or you'd like to make a comment uh, or if anything that I've said here you don't agree with, I would certainly like to hear you uh, tell me why and uh, I will get back to you and we can have that debate. Please give us a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed I would sure appreciate it. Get your friends to subscribe and check it out because I do have some great informational videos out there regarding nano tanks in specific but uh, I really really would like to have uh, those uh, subscribers who are returning people that come back and see us all the time. And uh, that would really make me feel good about this. Now I'm doing this basically because I'm trying to help people. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to be the number one expert on YouTube here regarding uh, aquascaping or uh, the nano tank, whatever. Uh, I am doing it simply because it's a hobby. It's not my main job. Like I said, um, music is my main thing, and uh, that is something that uh, obviously has nothing to do with this. And uh, I just hope that uh, you'll take the time to just give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe. Anyways, George with the Art of Water. I'm going to end this now. Thank you so much for your time. Um, Water is an art uh, when you're doing aquariums. And as you can see, uh, all of these scapes are very different from each other. They do have some common themes, but uh, basically they're pretty much all the same when it comes right down to it. So anyways, George with the Art of Water, if you have any questions, like I said, leave me a comment, thumbs up, subscribe. You guys have a great evening, and we'll talk again soon.